How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation. It's time to get that imagination all cranked up, get into some creativity, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Oscar Martin. And if you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. He's a beautiful comic book artist and illustrator. Um, I love his line work. He, I believe he worked on uh, Tom and Jerry early on in his career, and you can definitely see some of those uh, lovely cartoony influences and he does one of those things that I think is um, really uh, typical of, of a artist that at least I'm drawn to that I think is a high quality um, that, that, that I feel is, is a great um, talent and skill to have is that he blends realism with that sense of fantasy and whimsy in just the way that he renders his worlds so like you can see that um, this isn't even though there's cartoon elements to it there's also um, a lot of realism and a lot of uh, just a high illustration work uh, behind there but still blending that kind of uh, slightly exaggerated uh, more expression in the faces more whimsical um, characters and, and settings and everything and I think he just does that phenomenally because I think you could say if you uh, you know switch this mouse character out with um just a more uh human character or uh even just almost even just the head and the hands you could switch out um and it would just be you know a typical kind of comic book um and i don't mean typical obviously there's there's a high level of skill here but you can also see that he just adds that little twist in there that just makes his illustrations really pop and i love his line work i think he does um just that that really playful playful lines and he, you can see the the cartoony influences just come across in all these expressions right here you know there's some really uh, exaggerated facial expressions you know really a lot of squash in that face this one in behind you can see this roaring this guy's got that great um, you know squash and stretch uh, between the both sides of the face so you got the squash on one side and the stretch on the other just beautiful beautiful work I'm blown away with this stuff. I think it's phenomenal. Definitely check out more stuff from him. I will throw a link in the description below if you guys want to um, see a little bit more. Um, unfortunately, I believe he is... Oh, I'm going to... Uh, I believe English isn't his primary language. I forget if he's French or uh, Portuguese or Spanish. Uh, I forget. But I had to translate um, this quote, so bear with me. It's probably not perfect English and probably uh, about 89% of the... the the quote there um, that he had but I thought it was a really interesting and something that um, I don't know that we talk a lot about and uh, so here goes uh, much work remains to be done the advantage is that I have left all other work to take care only to finish this book and I thought that was really great again it's kind of um, most people might think of it just as kind of a, a passing quote and wouldn't necessarily think to really break it down but I thought it was really interesting because it's it really speaks to me about um, priorities and like what's important and how to um, organize things a lot of times uh, I know for myself this is something that, that I tend to, to struggle with is that I have a, a lot of different irons in the fire and I think when you're starting out there's there's kind of two ways to go about things you can really just focus on one particular thing and just really hone in and be phenomenal at that but I think it kind of limits you sometimes a little bit especially when you're first starting out I think it's kind of good to dip your toes into a couple different fields and continue those skill levels um, so that you kind of have a more prolific um, experience and, and repertoire that you can really pull from um, meaning that if you know how to ride a bike really well and that's all you do is just ride a bike ride a bike ride a bike which is great if there's a bicycle race that you can get sponsored in but if there's um you know a football game going on that somebody wants to pay you to be in but you can't catch or throw it kind of hinders you but if you kind of well maybe bike riding is your main focus but you also you know also play some football you play a little basketball all which will help inform and make you a better athlete overall so your, your bicycling will get better i think it's um also good to be pretty well-rounded um, 
and that's kind of where I look at it but I think that I struggle because there's there's times where I think I should be a little more like this where I leave everything else behind and just focus on one particular thing because I do a lot of illustration work and uh, a lot of 2d stuff and then also 3d and they, they really help complement each other but I always um, think to myself too and let me know what you guys think in the comments below you know is it is it better to, to really only focus on one aspect than the other so that I can really hone in that skill but I personally think at the level that I'm working at it, it, they're still really complementary um, but in the end you know obviously the hours that I spend animating I'm not spending illustrating and vice versa so I think there are some some hindrances to that um, but I'm getting a little rambly here so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below so let's get into some animation this is the 3d rhino rig it's a free rig over at creative crash if you guys want to check it out I will throw a link in the description below and the quick little elevator pitch uh, if you guys have never checked out uh, one of my videos before what we'll be doing for the rest of the video is we give ourselves about 48 frames of animation I go off and I find a rig or a character that I've never used before that's a free resource that you guys can play around with as well and we kind of go from there a little bit of over the shoulder hang out with me while I animate a little bit of kind of talking through the process or talking through uh, the life of uh, creative uh, <laughs> the, the creative journey in general um, and yeah, just the main goal of these videos is to hopefully encourage you guys and inspire you guys to go off and create something amazing today. And if you do, definitely um, share it back down in the bottom or send me a message or anything so I can hopefully encourage you guys, give you some thumbs up, um, just some positivity uh, to help hopefully keep you guys motivated in your uh, creative journey, whatever medium that may be. So that being said, let's go ahead and get in here. Now we are using Autodesk Maya 2015 today, which I haven't been using a lot of, so you'll have to bear with me. There'll probably be a couple of things where they're a little bit different, but I thought we'd mix it up. I've been using too much of 2014 lately, and I believe 2016's even out, which I haven't spent much time with as well. So I want to try and get into those. Only um, kind of hesitation was the amount of system resources while recording these videos that I was thinking through. So. If I notice a lot, maybe I'll switch back to older versions, but I thought it would be fun to play around with some of the other ones. So let's go ahead and get in here. I think um, for today's video, I'm just going to do a cycle. I was going to try and do something a little bit more, but it's a little bit late, and tomorrow's Christmas, so just do one that I think will be not super quick. We'll still probably do our hour, but that way I can kind of guarantee that it won't go on much past that. And so the, the kind of different personality quirk I was thinking for for this rig that we can throw in there would be really kind of wide sway lumbering steps was kind of the the personality tweak that would take it a little bit away from just a vanilla walk so let's see what we can come up with here let's kind of pull those in want to create that uh, storytelling pose where we can here and let's go ahead and dip the head down here maybe we'll do it with the neck do we have a I know it's a jaw but is there actually a head controller might have to do it this way then Uh, drop the ears down here to try and give them some character and personality. Try and give them a little bit of dopeyish ears. Let's rotate that uh, tusk a little bit back. Bring this one a little bit forward. Just to kind of vary. I don't think I'm going to push those legs back too much because that kind of hits something weird in the thigh there. And I think I'm going to switch the tail so he kind of favors inward a little bit more. Let's do it throughout. And we'll bring that out. So we still get the silhouette there, but we're just going to make it a little more droopy. 
still try and clean that up. It's a little sharp there for that angle, so I'm just trying to make it a little more like there's a curve there. That feels a little better. All right, I think that's a good place to start with. So let's go ahead and grab everything. Let's go on a set of frame range from zero to, uh, let's just set that at 48 here. And let's make sure we just have our NURB curves, NURB surfaces, and polygons selected so that we don't uh, key anything we don't need to. We'll go ahead and save our file one more time before we set our first key. And just remember, we are using Autodesk Maya 2015 for today's video. And for more information on that, definitely check out uh, this link in the description below. And let's go ahead and set our first key here. All right. I think we'll keep with our pretty uh, typical uh, base 12 system for this walk. So we'll go ahead and push those guys forward there. Set that. these two back there and let's uh, set that let's kind of flick there okay Those feel fairly even. And we'll go here at 24, set that, set that there. Okay, and we'll go the other side. Bring that, and we're just middle mouse buttoning here and dragging it over and then hitting S on our keyboard just to duplicate those ones. And let's see that. It feels a bit slow here. All right, one second here. Okay, we're just putting it on uh, 24 frames per second for that. So you're getting a little bit of slowing down there. Okay, and let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit on, oh, sorry about that, I had to sneeze. And hey, I didn't stop the recording this time, so kudos. Okay, let's do a little bit of up and down on the uh, overall control here. And I did turn on uh, auto key, which is this little key over here in red. That makes it so I don't have to hit S um, every time I wanna set a key. Once I've already done that on uh, the controller, the attributes, now I can just uh, move them and they'll set a key there themselves right there. And that's an important thing to have uh, turned on. It just helps the workflow, at least for myself. If you guys have a different workflow, definitely share that as well. But for me, that's how I like to do it. And let's look at uh, our graph editor here and look at those translate lines. And let's kind of even them up a little bit more. And again, I haven't really set my preferences too much in 2015. Like I have them locked down in other versions. So occasionally I'm sure I'll see some stuff that uh, I'll have to adjust here. But I thought, um, A, I think this rig only works in the newer version. So that's one of the reasons why I played around with that. But also it's good to mix it up sometimes and not use the same version. Need to get more into uh, doing some work in Blender as well as, um, oh, what's that other one? Cinema 4D? Uh, just play around with some other uh, animating programs as well, just so that I don't get uh, too locked into just one particular program. Because the important thing uh, to remember when animating is yes, there's gonna be a learning curve um, to understanding a program like Autodesk Maya. But the important thing is to learn how animation works because it's gonna be important um, if you know the software changes in the next version, you wanna just be able to adapt and understand the basic principles of everything that's going on and be able to animate no matter what program you're offered or what rig um, you're given or what controls you have or anything. 
And that's kind of why, one of the reasons at least, uh, why I like to mix it up and give myself a rig I've never used before because then I don't really have any fallback that I have. I mean, I, I kind of have the understanding of how animation works. Again, I'm not saying I'm perfect or anything. Um, but it's good to be able to be flexible like that and not get so used to one program that you kind of lose track of the focus and the importance of just understanding all the principles, which um, I usually believe every time I do a video. I'll raise those up a little bit higher. Um, in the description, I always link to Frank and Ollie's uh, great 12 principles of animation. And if you haven't had a chance to check those out, uh, definitely do so or check out the illusion of life which is another wonderful uh, basically the disney method and tips of animating from the amazing nine old men and i will have a link to that in the description below as well as the richard williams book and the great uh oh now i'm spacing what's his name guy who animated the genie well, i can't think of his name Phenomenal animator, one of my favorites. It's not Eric Larson, it's Eric Goldberg. Is it Eric Goldberg? Yes, I believe so. Uh, he has a phenomenal cartoon animation crash course that's really good that you guys should pick up as well, which I have on my shelf over there. But I'm not going to worry about grabbing that right now. Okay, so I'm just trying to do a little bit of up and down in the hips there. let's get the passing positions built in on the feet first so i'll go ahead and lock them in there and raise them up pop them down raise them up again and pop them down and go again okay and let's go to the other side and they'll be planted there so i'll raise them up here Let's uh, drop the uh, up and down a little bit lower, this is just overall. That's a little better. And I think we are getting a little bit of lag, but that's okay. So I do want to do a bit of translate X. Do some rotate. And I'll definitely have to do some offsetting. I'm starting to get more of a lumbering feel here. Okay. 
Okay, hang on, let's look at the notes here. Maybe we'll go a little bit the other way. That way. That way. That way. And back to zero. Let's clean that up. the belly over here. Let's actually do it on zero. And the 12, we'll push it over. Let's do the 24 the other way. 36. Do a little bit of rotate uh, Y here to favor that front planted foot, and there to favor that one. Let's do that again, back again, and then go back to the beginning. Let's uh, zero that out a little, or uh, minimize that a little more. Even it out. One thing I did notice is I had an extraneous key here, so I'm just going to get rid of those. Let's see. Alright, and let's do a little bit of uh, rotate Y here. Let's favor that front planted foot. And that one there. Looks like this is going to do too much for us, so let's scale it back here. Do hardly any of that. So we don't need that much of that, but we just want to feel it a little bit. So let's scale it back here. Let's take a look at it. There's a little bit of squishiness there, which I guess only really applies to this angle, which we're not going to shoot from anyway, so maybe I'll have to go right there. And let's see. Let's play with the feet a little bit. It's a translate X on that side versus this side, kind of out let's go ahead and uh, actually kick it out in X to go out a little bit out a little bit and over here and maybe we don't need that much of it let's also make the steps a little lower they seem a little bit too high so let's take the translate Y here and let's shrink them down a little bit steps a little bit heavier too as we go but right now I'm just gonna do uh, that same thing where I kick them out a little bit and kick it out a little bit here and also lower it some as well so not as high steps and then go kick out so far 
Let's kind of watch them and see how they feel. I feel like they might still be a little too far push outward, so let's see. Okay. I also want to take, let's go two frames from the end and do translate up higher so they pound down a little bit heavier. And let's go here. I'm just trying to make these steps feel a little, I mean it's a rhinoceros after all, so I want the steps to feel a little heavier. Let's watch them now. Okay, now let's look at our graph editor here and look at our uh, Y values. And I don't mind the highs being so high here. I was thinking maybe this um, passing position here would be the highest point, but I think I like it being the end, so I think that's all right. I think we'll keep that. And let's look at the other one on this side and look at the translate wise. And again, we just kind of want to have that same style here and have a little bit smoother movement. So let's see. All right. And let's also go ahead and look at um, the toe tap here. Actually, not toe tap. Let's do toe tap. No, because it's going to intersect through the ground. We don't want that. What we do want is a little bit of rotate and zero out if we can. And we want a little bit of rotate here. And then we keep a little bit of and zero out. drag here uh, four frames after the liftoff. Oh, let's make sure we zero that out again. Keep it planted there and then four frames out. We're going to go ahead and drag that. And again, we want to do a little bit of lift here. Let's go ahead and watch that now. step feels a little bit heavier. I think we could probably still do a little more rotate X here. Okay, now let's start doing this one here. So we know we want the rotate X to be up there and then zero out there. And keep the zero there. frames from it, we wanted to drag that back, and four frames from the lift off here, we wanted to drag that back, and now let's clean that up. We're basically doing the same thing we did on the other side, with just a little variation here. So let's see. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back feet and we'll approach those a little bit differently. So 
these ones I'm not going to put as much detail in there so I'm just going to rotate it back on 6 6 frames after the lift off and rotate back here in 2 frames okay and we'll drag back there lift it up up a little bit and zero okay let's look at that and clean up clean that up a little bit more try to make it feel fairly similar okay let's look at the other side and we're going to drag that back there lift it up we needed two frames for the back so the back's not going to feel nearly as heavy as the front feet are going to feel because we um, don't have as sharp of timing and we don't have as much distance that's being crossed in that timing as well. a little bit of um, uh, slow down because we've got basically two frames here that are mimicking each other but we'll we'll get into that later and just to offer some frame variation in there um, now one thing I am noticing with these back steps is because the amount that we have them dragging in this mid position there's some intersection there so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, scale that back overall on both steps just to try and get rid of that deformation there. I'm still going to have some rotate X in there, but just not as much. Let's go ahead and see that now. Translate X is probably going the wrong way, or the opposite way of what they should in order to avoid that. So let's see if we can rectify that a little bit better. So that would mean on here, we'd want to push the hips the other way, over the planted foot. For some reason, I did that the reverse of what I usually do. That's what we're getting at. I'm glad we caught that though. That should help a little bit. Let's see. 
still want to get that character who lost a little bit of the lumberingness that we had before. Let's see. Feels a little too wild. Let's see what we're up there. Let's see. Again, just trying to keep tone it down by adding more to it. Which seems weird. Set the what's going on with the chest a little bit more. Okay, let's play with that a little bit more too. Let's see. swing and bring the tail here. Yeah, maybe we'll tone down the rotate axis and the feet and the um, translation as well. So they're a little bit lower steps here. Wow. Even that out a little bit more. Let's see.
let's actually start it here. here and we'll swing it out there for 18 there there um, 42 there and then back again and I think I want to actually move this so it's on Again, let's see. Right there. And then we'll do the opposite of the two here. So this one will be dragging there and swinging out there. Okay. That feels a little better. Let's do some stuff on the ears here. We'll just do a little bit of bounce at three. Actually, let's just do six flat and run it over down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. but we'll go ahead and see how it feels and then let's look at the tips of the ears and we'll have them swing up a little bit and go down swing up a little bit and go down swing up a little bit and go down swing up a little bit down and then back to where we were. Really, let's go ahead and just kind of even that out a little bit more. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm okay with there being a lot of variation there. Just so it feel a little bit floppy. Yeah, let's look at the jaw. Just do a little bit of bounce in there, and this is going to be over exaggerated and not at the right time. But we'll just do a rough pass here. Back again. Okay, and we can delay that about two frames. it a little bit more. 
again. I still want to keep it mostly closed, but just so we get a little bit of... Okay, still probably too much. So I'll go ahead and adjust middle as before. Let's see. And just so it face feels a little more fleshy. All right, and let's look at the horns themselves. Let's do a little bit of subtle side sway here. Bring it back again. And then let's delay it by about two frames. nostrils here. And do some flare. And these are a little sensitive, so I am just going to go in and kind of duplicate, and then I'll add some variety in the graph editor here. so they don't all feel the same air. Still keep a pretty close feel to them, but just so it's not exactly duplicated. Excuse me for the hiccups again. Okay, like I said, just a little bit. Maybe we could even amp that up a little bit more on both sides. There we go, now we can kind of feel it. And let's look at the eyes here. I think this is going to be no. Yeah. Yeah, but we can do a blink. Keep it closed. Let's see if we can keep that blink. And then zoom out again. And then what we'll want to do is cue that and cue that. hold there and we'll overshoot for more open before we close and we'll cue what we have here and bring that there okay so let's see that see if we get a nice little blink there I think we could even grab the tips of these ears and delay one more frame. Just to loosen them up even more. Get some floppy ears going. Okay, now getting back to what I was talking about when we started and ended with such similar frames, we're going to grab everything, look at our graph editor, hit F on the graph editor to focus, and we're just going to do this one frame off still keep it at 48 frames but that way we have that one frame difference that's going to be going throughout the body so that we don't feel like we're holding for two keys there and let's go ahead and turn our neural curves off let's go ahead and play this guy yeah it feels a bit lumbering a bit like he's got that flabby belly i think i am going to pull the back feet in a little bit more 
just because I still feel like there's some kind of funky stuff going on with uh, how the back thigh kind of approaches the belly, get some deformation there. So I'm going to see if that maybe helps us out a little bit more. Let's see. It's just like right there, you get that little bit. So maybe we'll just tilt the camera angle a little bit more. Let's see how it plays here. Or if we push it out and see how it feels there. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Um, I wish there was just a um, controller here that so we could pull those knees out a little bit more so I don't think there's gonna be even if we do the ankle no, zero out even if we do rotate Y it doesn't really push that knee out unfortunately well we can try it let's see let's see if it does or if it cleans that up a little bit more no it still goes in there it something like that in order to get it out but I'm not gonna do that okay so I think instead maybe we'll just do a little bit more pushed over camera angle so at least we don't completely lose that foot on those frames I feel like this is um, looks better for the back end here but the main point of this was to get that kind of flabby back and forth, which maybe we'll just do a, a head on here, a slight angle. Yeah, I feel like that looks better. Um, I'm going to play blast this and see if I get a little bit better frame rate and also tilt the camera angle a little bit more downward, get that kind of upward look with a little more dynamic. So one, okay tilted the camera angle a little bit more and then pushed that foot out a little bit more because uh, from this camera angle it was feeling a little bit more like it favored uh, this side just because the camera angle really even though they're fairly even distance between the head and the feet um, still getting a little bit of lag so sorry about that and I think one other thing I'm going to do um, kind of like this angle I feel like it's a, a fun angle and really flabby accentuates that um, side to side sway. I think I'm gonna delay the back horn by one, two frames. So let's turn our nerve curves back on. Let's grab this one. Let's delay it by, I'm gonna say by two frames. And let's go ahead and play blast that again. Okay, I think maybe just one frame feels okay, but not two frames feels a little too long. One frame is really just to like kind of tweak it. Two frames you can start feeling it. I don't really want to feel it. I just wanted to kind of have some variation there. So I think I'm just going to push that back to one frame. So let's turn those nerve curves back on. And this is the stuff that uh, really, if the playback speed in the main viewer isn't 100%, you can't really, you're not going to really see too much. So that's why it's helpful to do a play blast. And let's go ahead and do I think this will be our last one, and then we'll take a look back at where we started. So one second here. Okay, so I think we'll take a look back at where we started. We're looking at the beautiful work of Oscar Martin, and he said, Much work remains to be done. The advantage is that I have left all other work to take care only to finish this book, and I think that's an important thing um, to try and figure out what are the important things in your life. And even if it's not just one thing you're focusing on, but if you can at least um, get rid of all the stuff that's really not that important to you in life. I mean, albeit you have to take care of some responsibilities, uh, even if they're not fun or the thing that you're focused on just so that you can do that stuff, but where you can, where you can cut out um, some of the stuff that just might be kind of wasted time, um, try and devote all that energy positivity and that imagination and that creation into those things that you find important and uh, continue 
one more step, one more day on your journey today. And uh, I hope you guys end up using this rig. I really uh, thought it was a fun one. A little bit laggier than some of the other ones just because it's uh, got a, a little more detail in it. But I thought it was a really great style. Um, and let me know what you guys think. If you do any uh, animation or anything creative, definitely share it down below so I can give you that thumbs up and that encouragement as well. And you have another place to share your work. And uh, I hope that you guys are, are continuing on your journey and just having a blast and a wonderful uh, winter season as well. And I think that'll do it for today. So that being said, looks like uh, I love you guys lots. Thanks for all the likes and subscribes. And we'll see you for some more animation tomorrow.